Well, hello there. Welcome back to my sewing room. I thought I'd give you a different view. And right now I'm going to finish with this is the spot where I stitch. I have this chair over here for when I have guests over to stitch. But this is my favorite spot. I have my little Ikea rolling cart over here with all my, you know, my drink, my lip gloss, tissue, all that stuff, coasters. And this is what the other half of the sewing room looks like where I sew and cut fabric and things like that. But I've had a lot of requests to share my stitching setup and what kind of lamps I use, what kind of magnifiers, if any, I use, and that kind of thing. So I thought this floss tube, which is floss tube number five, I would just concentrate on that. So I kind of want to show you. Here's, here's my pillow. I always stitch with a pillow. There's an ottoman. Because I want to put my feet up if I'm going to be stitching for a while. And so let's talk about this lamp first. So this is a daylight lamp. And it can pivot this way. And it has several different settings. You just... Turn it on and off like this. So it's a touch lamp. I got this on Amazon. I can't remember what it's called, but I will put a link to where I bought it. Now, I also bought this. This is my daylight lamp, and I've had this for a long time. And I bought my first one on Amazon, but now when I showed them to Kimberly a few years ago, now she carries them in her shop. And that's a nice one for um, your lap. So you can set it up on your lap, but you're kind of trapped there a little bit. So I usually take that when it's portable or when I'm like at a stitching retreat, when I'm stitching from a table. But it's nice because it, let's see if I can do this with one hand. It's got the magnifier under there with the lights. And then you can look through the magnification and it pivots, so that's nice. What I mostly use are these, which are my, which are mag eyes right here. See, so that pivots up and down, so you can put it on top of your head, and then, so you wear this kind of like a headband, and then you can push this up and down. So you can push it up, look at the TV, talk to your people, whatever, and then push it back down to stitch. So I really, really love these. And uh, you, you slip in the magnification in the front. Okay, so let me show you this. Let me get this glare off. This is a new package that I bought so I can stick in my trailer so I can have doubles. I bought these on Amazon as well. Aren't they attractive? <laughs> I always say it's like my welding helmet or something like that. But it comes with a couple of different... Um, magnifications and then you can buy extras as well and they just slip in and out of the front Ugh, my glare is terrible they just slip in and out of the front like this you can just lift them out and put them back in so that's the mag eyes and i definitely do need magnification when i'm stitching in higher count fabric and i use my lamp at night and not in the day and this is my stitching setup right here i've got a lap board and I bought that a long time ago and I think that I, I got that at home goods and I can put my laptop on it and my stitching my drawing whatever it's nice and then here's my stitching right here right now I'm working on Winter Rose Manor by Brenda Gervais and I cannot live without this this is my thing that I love I got this on Amazon there's the brand. It comes in all different colors. I love it because it's just like a pillow. It's very lightweight, so it's not going to fall off if you tip it or whatever like that. But I like it because it holds my pattern in there when I'm stitching. And it also has pockets on the sides where you can put a few different things. So that's my setup. And so I, I set up the camera over here a little bit ago. So I'm filming this kind of backwards. This is the opening part of the video, but I actually showed you my stitching 
before. So I'm kind of turning these around. But um, I put my camera right here in this Ikea tray and put it over the top here where I'm stitching so that you can see my setup and watch me stitch for a little bit. I don't know how close you can see my stitches, but at least you can see my setup and, you know, see how, see how I do it and see how it goes. So I will be right back as soon as I get set up. Okay, so here I am over here in my fun little stitchy spot where I'm comfortable. And here's my little lap board on top of a pillow. I like to use a pillow so that it brings it up to me so that I'm not bending over all the time and hurting my neck. So I just like my work raised up. And then of course it's winter time and it's cold so I've got my little afghan on. And here's my pattern holder that I showed you. I love that it's soft and lightweight. And I have like a little tape measure in the little side pocket. I know this is a close up view, so I don't know if you can see everything, but I usually keep it rolled up right here while I'm stitching. And then when I'm finished, I'll uh, put it away in the bag. And then I've got my design board. This one I've got in the 10 inch size. I have my smaller bitty boards as well that fit inside a bag got my needle minder, I've got the beautiful flosses, scissors, this is my little um, pin cushion that I keep my um, pins in. These are my small, my mini applique pins, but I keep them in this little rocking chair pin cushion that I made, and I do, I do have a tutorial on this here on my channel, but I keep these in here for counting pins. So if I'm doing long borders or something like that, I'll insert a pin every 10 so that I can count and see where I'm at when I do need to do like 126 stitches or something like that. And then I have my little leftover bits of thread here that I keep on my design board, but I really like using these design boards. It keeps everything nice and neat and portable and I don't have to lift everything up, you know, separately. I can just lift up the board and move it around. Now, I do have my little uh, mag eyes on, and I don't have my lamp turned on right now because it's daytime, but I definitely use that at night. And when I, this is where I stitch normally, or I stitch downstairs in the family room when I'm watching a movie or something with Mr. Honey. And all I have to do is just take this whole thing. I've got the chair down there that's comfortable, and I have the same lamp down there as well. So I just have to take all of this with me. Okay, so this is Winter Rose Manor. And again, I have the chart in here, but I don't have to look at it because I'm just gonna be filling in this house. But I thought this was the perfect stitch to show you because this is where I'm at. So I'm gonna be using Perfect Pie Crust. And when I've got my threads on, my floss ring, I just pull them off like that, and then I find where the bend is. See, on Classic Color Works, they're already cut. So what I do is I cut the top half, so I've got one six strand that I can pull out. I fold these back up. I hope you can see everything I'm doing. Let me try to get it right in the camera. And, you know, it always seems harder when you're on, on a video. So anyway, so then I just set these back up here and these are my threads. I just find the end right here and pull a single one out. I kind of fuzz them up a little bit on the end. Pull a single one out, lay that there, and then I'll roll this right here because I'm going to be using these for a little while. So I'll roll that and I'll just set that right there so that I can have easy access to it. And then I grab my needles. I like to use my own tapestry needles. There's lots of great needles out there on the market, but um, I love mine. The eye is wider so it's easy to thread 
and they're kind of right here on the end instead of rounded it's kind of flat and so it stops my needle from rolling and so my threads lie nice and flat so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be filling in right here and so sometimes I'll start this is the back of mine sometimes I'll start with the pin stitch if it's clear out in the corner but I usually just will go behind a color right there now because I'm using over dyed threads I do one X at a time I'm right-handed so I always stitch uh, right to left so as I'm stitching in hand I keep this rolled up or folded however you want to do it I just pull it up right here and then I start my first leg down here and come up like this I'm stitching over two it's hard for me I can't see it right now so I can't stitch but I'm kind of trying to bring it closer to the camera so you can see what I'm doing and now I'm going to finish that X right there and then I'm going to set up my next stitch by going over and going into the X so that my first leg will go this way I always stitch with my first legs going this way and then I finish the cross going that way that doesn't mean you have to do it that way that's just how I do it the most important thing that you need to remember is however you do it it needs to all be the same in your cross stitch just so that it will look nicer so again I'm just trying to do this slow so that you can see but on my needle I have two threads from the linen pulling going down setting my stitch up and coming back I'll do it slowly here a few more times oh my heck so I'm back again sorry I didn't realize that it had stopped filming I don't know why it just my phone kicked me off from filming so I'm doing this by myself Cassidy's not here so it's kind of a, an experience for me so uh, while I was gone I took advantage of grabbing my needles so that I could show them to you so here's my tapestry needles that I was telling you about now they come in a card like this whoops this is what the inside looks like so I have six different kinds of needles the yellow ones are tapestry and you can see there's all different variety of sizes what's left in here is my large sizes I don't use those very often those are the ones that I would use for my 10 count so if you're using my 10 count vintage cloth you need a bigger needle so that your needle doesn't just fall through the holes and but I wanted to show you they also come in a container like this in a tube and there's a whole bunch of sizes in there so that's what I'm using now I've used these so much you can hardly see the yellow on the end anymore but it, it's still there you just can't really see it because of the angle that we're at so those are my tapestry needles then another thing I grabbed is I forgot to show you that I have I usually have beeswax on my design board I like 100% beeswax and I don't like to use it on here let me set this here and I'll pull this thread through I don't like to use it on the entire thread I mean it's okay if you do but I just don't find it necessary what I do is after I've threaded or before I've threaded on the tail end I'll usually just run it through like the last six or eight inches and I find that one running it through once very lightly or twice lightly just works fine now what the beeswax helps with is tangling and also fraying of your thread and so I find that really where your thread tangles or frays the most is on the tail end because it's always being pulled through and kind of whipped and it has the most pressure on it as you're going through so you can apply that anytime you want and um, I just do that sometimes when I'm having a problem with my threads tangling and so I just wanted to show you that so again I know I keep saying so but oh well that's how I talk right and I am sewing so uh, 
There I go again. I don't know how much you can really actually see other than just my stitching setup so that I can tell you how I stitch. But again, I'm going over two threads and I just make sure that I have two linen threads on my needle. Pull it through, go back the other way and finish the X and then I'll come back over two linen threads this way. And then I'm going down over two diagonally. So I'm skipping one hole and going down to the next hole diagonally and then coming across, getting two threads on my needle and then going back up and finishing the X diagonally, coming back over and setting up for the next stitch And I just keep going back and forth. You'd be surprised how quickly you can stitch this way and you can just kind of get into a rhythm. Now when I'm going the other direction, I'll set up the next stitch. Kind of just putting my needle in there. Turning my work around. And now I'm going to be going this direction so that all of my stitches will go the same way. Now, of course, I've got a knot in there just because I'm filming. So hang on, let me get this thing out. Most of the time you can just get it out by unthreading your needle and pulling your thread out and popping it out. There we go. Okay, back to my regular stitching. So now because I'm going the other way and turned my work over, I can ensure that all of my X's are going the right direction and starting and stopping. I really think that beeswax helps it go smoother. There's lots of thread conditioners out there on the market, but I've just always used 100% beeswax, and I've been completely happy with it. It can gum up your thread if you want to, you know, if you keep running it back and forth, that's just not necessary. You don't need to coat it. You know, you just need to get like a little thin film on it, and it will not hurt your thread at all. It won't hurt your linen, your thread. It's all natural, and... It's good stuff. All right, so I think I'm just going to keep stitching back and forth. I don't know how interesting this is for you to watch, but I've had so many people ask me if I would do this for you. So here's my best shot. If it works out, I might be able to continue setting the camera up and showing a few other little stitchy things here in my chair. I really enjoy feeling fill-in stitches, like when I'm watching a movie or listening to a book or something that I want to concentrate on, because this is kind of like a no-brainer no stitching. You just fill in, and I just love the progress. you know, that I can make going back and forth. So with this, oh, I also wanted to show you, see how these are kind of ragged ends, meaning, well, I shouldn't say ragged end, they're, they're uneven. I did that on purpose so that it wasn't like a straight when the variegation starts and stops, so that it looks a little bit more natural. Um, that's just something that I do sometimes. With this stitch, I'll probably end up going all the way down here and then just fill in here whatever's left on my thread and then come back here and 
I just kind of, you know, fill in wherever my needle will take me. I don't like to travel a lot across the back, and so I won't unless I have to. But um, I think I did travel, yeah, from back, back and forth here, but I know these pink threads will cover that up. So I'm not too worried about that. You know, I think my front looks pretty good. The back doesn't look as good as the front, but I'm not too worried about that. I'm not one of those stitchers. I mean, it's not crazy messy, but it's, you know, it's there. And I'm sure my grandma, you know, was the one who taught me because her mother probably taught her that your back should be nice and neat. But I think no matter what, my grandma would still be proud of me, right? I think she's still proud of me no matter what my back looks like, right? Okay, so I'm just going to keep stitching on and I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope I've inspired you to try stitching in hand if you haven't before. I find it, you know, gives me a lot more freedom and I just, you know, don't seem to have a problem rolling my fabric from top to bottom and then when I'm finished, I'll just press it very carefully from the back and I won't use any steam or anything like that. Any moisture I won't apply because especially if I've used over dyed floss or over dyed fabrics, you don't want any running like that. I'll just press from the back and I don't worry if it's not completely flat because that will work out, you know, during the process of framing for lacing, whether I frame it myself or whether it's sewn into a pillow or whether it's professionally framed, that will kind of take care of itself. And I appreciate you joining me for this episode of my stitching setup uh, for my floss tube. And I will chat with you later.